Hello everybody, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, whatever it is where you are, and welcome to The Mighty Miss Menagerie, or... Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. Does Wild Beyond the Witchlight? And I know that on what I posted and on everything that's been said today, it was going to be one Witchlight and one uh, Candlekeep Mysteries, but today will actually be two Witchlights back to back, so we can kind of get back on our normal editing and uh, screen schedule with that. And then next week, it'll be back to your regularly scheduled programming. So we'll uh, keep oh. you posted. Well, actually, but, will it? Oh, because... it will not. It will be Dread <laughs> next week, which we're also very excited about. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so else with the mic up. Polonies are crazy. Yes. So we will be doing a streaming of Dread DM'd by Mark next Sunday, uh, and we will let you know what the uh, updated D&D schedule is for that week once we work it out. Um, and with all of that, uh, would we perhaps have a lovely recap? All right. Okay, so we were all in the snail races, and they called us up to ride the snails, which would be very exciting if, if you fit on one of them. <laughs> so... <laughs> It was a great little race. Kaim won. Kaim? Kaim. It was Persimmons. Oh, Persimmon won. I'm so sorry. I watched it back and I was angry all over again. That's why I know. Thank you. Because you should be. Kate found his first crush. Nikade won love. Yeah. So Nikade, Nikade found his first crush, so he won in his own way. Excellent. That's right. And uh, so that occurred. And during that time, Kettle Stream kind of left. She wasn't really sneaking away necessarily. She was just like, um, I'm still looking for something. Goodbye. So she goes on to the gondola swans. So uh, after the snail races, <laughs> Cody, Cody decides to head over to the mine ride because that's what we want to do next. And so he is over there and on the way he sees a strange toad man creature thing that seems to take something from one of the patrons but when cody goes up to that patron and is like hey i just saw this weird disappearing toad person are you missing anything she's like no i'm fine i'm not missing anything so uh so then we get to the mine ride persimmon sees his deepest darkest fear his old master in the cart with him attacks then kind of runs into the crowd real shaken up we're like, let's go get a snack, maybe. It's snack time. Because <laughs> uh, as he ran away, he runs right into our third coven member, Shadow Gal. <laughs> so, uh, Shadow Gal McMoon face. McMoon face. <laughs> so, and that was very terrifying for him. So he's real high strung right now. So we make our way to get a little custard deliciousness. And as we're sitting there, um, a bard in a tree starts talking to us. And she's a gnome. And she's like, what up, guys? Diddly-ly. And we're like, hey, um, how are you? And she's like, I am Ellie Wick Tumblestrom. And we all immediately were like, E.T. There was no hesitation. Or <laughs> we immediately made the connection. Yeah. So she was like, yeah, that me. I gave you those tickets because I want you to find the thing that you're supposed to find. And we're like, what are we supposed to find? And she's like, he knows. <laughs> the fairy knows. So um, they talk a little bit about, so this gal, she knows all of her names. She knows that Persimmon is here to find the Fae Crossing and that he's here because of his master or because of his, um, this warlock friend. Marduk. Madrick. Madrick. So they chat for a little bit and then we're like, and that really freaks him out. So then he runs away. We don't notice immediately. And then we're like, okay, well, we'll help you. We'll try to find this crossing. That Kanku wanted to find this crossing too. And she's like, yeah, that Kanku is on the right track. And I think encourages us to team up with her. So we're like, okay, cool. So then we're going, we go look for Percy who's kind of run away to the dragonfly rides. And uh, we meet up with the Kanku Kettle Stream, and we're like, well, Ellie says you're on the right track. And, and the Kanku's like, I know that person. Did they know that person? <laughs> did, <laughs> did the Kanku know Ellie? Tumble is Strum? Tumble Strum? Um, not like well. Okay, but I was like, yeah, I've heard of that person. Um, okay, well, I'm going attraction to attraction to find um, the crossing. And I think it's either in the staff area or the carousel. And we're like, well, it's not in the staff area. It's probably in the carousel. So um, 
Cody's like, I'm going to go change my clothes. <laughs> and then Percy kind of joins back up with us. And we all kind of agree to work a little bit together with Kettle Stream, whose, you know, end mission we're not too sure about. So then the lights start flickering. It's time for the big show. And so Cody's like, oh, I got my clothes changed. Hey, there's Burley. What's up, man? And Burley's like, I got some concerns. But I don't want to talk about them to Mr. Mrs. Mr. Mrs. Light and Witch because, you know, I love them and I trust them. And Cody's like, absolutely, we love them, we trust them. I'm going to go tell them that you had concerns because now I'm concerned about you. He didn't say that, but maybe he was thinking of it. And so then he goes and he's walking along and he hears Mr. M Mrs. Light and Witch talking. And they're like, eh, that Kanku pest. Eh, she doesn't know anything. And then... They, they just, I think they say, like, she doesn't know anything, and she'll go away eventually. And then Cody's like, I better knock on the door and say hello. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> and it's time for the big show. Recapitated. Excellent. Yeah. And with our moment of beginning to gather around for the big topic extravaganza, we are going to do a few days back in time. Oh. <laughs> we cannot stay on it. It's like lost up in here. I know. There's no single timeline. There's a multiverse thing happening. Are I we going to do flash forwards eventually? Um, when we start losing ratings in the we'll fifth season? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't ruin it. Uh, speaking of going back a few days, in a small but quaint hut, in the middle of a distant forest, within Room itself, a forest that once upon a time, two of our lovely carnival goers would have found very familiar. There is a single occupant where at one time there were more. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'm Jeltra. Um, I am a half elf, wood elf, and um, I'm by myself in the woods because my mother Sabine uh, died a few years ago, and it was, used to be the two of us um, just in this in this hut, enjoying ourselves, living quietly, and um, nurturing the woods, nurturing nature, and I've been very, very lonely and kind of depressed for the past two years since her passing. Jeltra, as time has gone on, with your only counterpart being the nature that you work to help and preserve, over the last few weeks, there's been this yearning, mm -hmm. this urging that seems to come up. And as you do your daily walks around the trails, checking in to make sure the woods are as they should be, you've continued to see these small visions mm -hmm. of what appears to be long white locks disappearing between trees, approaching to see who has intruded upon this land. Always there is nothing there, nobody. But those white locks are familiar. You remember growing up that you and, you and your mother frequently had a visitor, uh, right. a woman that your mother called Granny, mm -hmm. um, though of no relation, who would often come to the forest to check in on her and to see you grow. And as your mother aged and time went on, those visits became less and less frequent, but your mother always spoke fondly of her. One of these times, deep in your youth. Though your mother often tried to stay away from the towns and cities, Granny convinced her to take you to a traveling carnival. Those memories seem to be flickering more present. Mm -hmm. And as you chase after those white locks as they disappear, finding once again nobody, at the base of the tree is an ornate envelope in a thick parchment with the gold lettering E T. Do I see any um, 
any signs of anybody, any tracks, anything around the base of the tree that might show me somebody left it there or, you know, what kind of creature might have left it there? Go ahead and roll perception. Nineteen. Yes. There is not a single trace of tracks, but as you investigate the area, mm-hmm. there is this faint magical aura on the tree itself that the envelope was set behind, and no other disturbance. Hmm. And as you examine it, you can see it beginning to fizzle and fade. I'm grabbing into- it. <laughs> uh, it's so it's uh, the tree itself. Oh, okay, like I thought the envelope was leaving. <laughs> oh <I'm> like, no! Apologies. <laughs> okay. no. uh, so fate magical aura around the tree. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I will stare at the aura, kind of try and imprint and and really memorize what this looks like as I grab the envelope and thank you. <laughs> A wind picks up, and in the rustle of the leaves, you can almost swear you hear, No, thank you. I'll sit down and I'll uh, open the envelope. Inside is a single golden ticket for the Witchlight Carnival, with your name printed on it in a fine cursive. Okay. Okay. And I will tuck it into my waistband and go back to the hut and start gathering up my things so I can go and find the carnival. Excellent. The the journey from your hut is clear, calm, open. The weather is just beginning to turn from summer to autumn and Though it has been many years, eight now, Mm -hmm. the carnival is set up two days away, exactly where you remember it from your previous journey. As you arrive at sunset, a line is slowly milling through the entryway, and it's clear the festivities have begun, as a small, evil-looking goblin... Mm -hmm grins at you from behind the countertop. Oh, yes. You already have a ticket. Yes. Well, enter. Don't hold up the line. Oh, oh, thank thank you. (laughs) Try and see what he's standing on or if he's like, you're really tall. It's a stool. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Why would you stand on poop? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll it's too early. put the ticket. <laughs> I'll put the ticket back into my little pouch and uh, walk into the <laughs> carnival, just kind of mesmerized, like absolutely starry-eyed, just <gasps> taking it all in, just enthralled by almost the sensory overload of what hits Jeltra because she's been by herself in the woods without pretty much any other contact for two years. It is crowded, boisterous. There's the sounds of laughter and music of a calliope coming off to the side. And as you see all these children and adults running around with butterfly wings, Bubbles floating overhead with park goers inside of them. There's a strange commotion. To your right, there's the sound of a grunt and a thwap as you see a man dressed very strangely chuck a dart over the shoulder of a large bunny, a heron gone, not hitting him seemingly, as the two large men and the heron gone go tumbling through the back of the curtain and out beyond the tent. 
that was dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll walk along. <laughs> As you continue through your evening, that group seems to be causing a lot of mischief. <laughs> mischief? <laughs> you see a snail race where narrowly a small fairy takes the lead as two herringon, the one that you nearly saw decapitated, <laughs> and another make eyes at each other and seem to be trying to let each other win. <laughs> Though the crowd doesn't seem to notice. Where else would you like to go looking at the map here within the carnival itself? I was thinking... 100% recommend. 100% uh, don't recommend. Mystery mine. Yeah. No. Um, Best ride in the park. Completely yeah. dark, very private. I'm on my own. What do I need privacy for? Um, no I was here beside her. Right. I was thinking of going to. Um, what was it? The fairy pie eating contest? Fairy cake. Fairy cakes. Fairy cake eating contest. I thought that was I didn't know what a fairy cake was. I was like, are they little are they little cakes that like fly? <laughs> so I really wanted to see what a fairy cake is. Excellent. Making your way from the snail racing across the carnival that is shaped in a little bit of a figure eight. Um, you pass the Calliope being played by a monkey with a, a little goblin walking around shaking a mug at people that are passing. Oh, um, I'll grab the mug that's off of mine and just shake it back <laughs> as if in greeting. Yes. Yes. Button! Oh no, Deltra. <laughs> the goblin <laughs> angrily points to a sign next to the Calliope oh. as the monkey seems to have finally caught on to what's going on and bursts into laughter. Apologies, she's a little short-tempered. <laughs> well, I, I thought we were being friendly. The sign reads, spare a button if you please, I'll sew it next to all of these. I offer nothing in its place besides a smile upon my face. And as you see, the vest that the monkey wears is just covered in buttons of all shapes, sizes, colors. Why on earth would you need more? They look amazing. Ooh, and the calliope starts to speed up a little bit as the monkey seems to be excited about your your compliment. Uh, and as the calliope speeds up, the carnival itself seems to almost lighten, become brighter, all of the colors more saturated as the mood improves. I'm 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 sorry. I don't I don't have any buttons. Um, as all of my clothes are kind of tattered, um, I. Haven't gone anywhere, haven't gotten any clothes for a while, and so, um, but uh, you look great, and if I find a button, I'll bring it back. Well, how about this? Since you are so lovely in recognizing the true beauty of all that I hold, and his tail is moving the crank on the calliope while he speaks to you, and he reaches into a pocket, I haven't gotten around to sewing these on yet, so why don't you have one for yourself? And he passes over, little brass button with filigree design inlaid all about the front. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Next time, come prepared. And then he turns back <laughs> and begins to instruct the goblin on getting more buttons from passerbys. I'll tuck it away. Making your way through. Uh, I like to think that the goblin like walks up to people and like, I don't have any loose buttons. It just pulls out Scissors, he's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All buttons can be loose if you try hard enough. <laughs> um, there's a running river that presses through this section of the carnival that you see on the border of the rest of it. Um, and you pass by a lost property on your way where there is a large displacer beast also wearing butterfly wings tending to some children. Uh, the carousel on the other side full of unicorns with horns moving around, not quite alive, but clearly animated as okay. the carousel's tended by uh, what appears to be a centaur. Mm -hmm. Making your way around to the feasting orchard on the far side of the carnival itself, there is the sound of 
a lute being struck as inside the mood is light and gay. The pastries being handed out as across the table you see large plates of these little cupcakes being stacked on top of each other. And they announce Final entries for the Fairy Cake Contest! Final entries! And coming through you see the very large man and the slightly smaller man that you'd seen earlier. The one a Goliath and the other dressed in a monochromatic outfit push their way through past you on their way out followed by the hair and gone hopping behind them. <laughs> Fretting. I'm assuming you often fret. They need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're gonna knock something over. <laughs> Miss! Yes? We yes? We need one more. Um. Oh, okay. What am I doing? <laughs> Eating! <gasps> I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> they set a place for you on this table uh, where you see three other competitors, uh, two on one side and one on the other, your final seat in the middle. And strangely sticking out in the crowd, sitting on a tree branch, uh, a gnomish woman playing her lute stops to wave at you and the mm. lute continues on its melody as she does so. <laughs> you have a dwarf to your right, a human to your left, and on the far side, a goblin, mm. all ready to compete. Coulter, do you need people to roll for those NPCs? That would be great. Do <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, so oh, no. <laughs> the uh, the <laughs> proprietor the fourth. walks <laughs> up and down. Yeah, of course. Uh, the proprietor walks up and down the table, uh, explaining that these contests will be to see who among you can contain within themselves the highest number of fairy cakes. These small glazed <laughs> cupcakes stacked on top of each other, each filled with a dollop of berry custard. The goal is simple. Eat as many as you can within 60 seconds. Ooh, wow. Too bad there's no gif here. <laughs> the, uh, the gnome setting up these rules walks to the side and says, On your mark, get set, eat! <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to need from all of you is a con saving throw. For all of our commoners, <laughs> there will be no bonuses to that. So for, just roll a d20? Yes. Um, and for our uh, wood elf, you will have whatever constitution bonus Common. you have, naturally. Okay. Interesting, Interesting choice. <laughs> Stamina. Keep it down. Right. You gotta keep, keep it within balance. yourself. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the point. And I will let Common. you each decide, or each describe what happens to your uh, <laughs> park goers that are succeeding or failing and enjoying their cupcakes. Uh, well, I guess I was probably a fairy. I'll be the, the fairy that was undeclared at the beginning. And I got one and a half down and uh, hiccuped and then got the other half down. That's and what did you roll? A two. Excellent. Uh, go ahead and roll a d8 for me. <laughs> two. You take two custard damage Aww. as you begin to struggle to shove them down that small fairy body not really meant to consume this quickly oh and who do we have next uh, i got a four so i'm assuming he is suddenly realizing that he's allergic to berry custard <laughs> and so he is clawing at his throat i'm assuming i'm the dwarf Go ahead and so he is clawing at his throat <laughs> d8 yes well, please where do all my dice go it's a bright orange one. Seven. Oh. Okay. I'm a commoner, um, so I'm dead. Yeah, right? uh, not, not quite, but you are not looking good as the dwarf beside you begins to turn <laughs> the same color as the inside of these cupcakes. Oh, gosh. Uh, um, so I think I'm probably the goblin because I rolled a five. And so I think maybe... Oh, my gosh. So I think maybe someone, like dared him to do this even though he hates sweets. He's like, on principle, I'm just going to freaking do it. And then takes two bites and is like, no, no. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Uh, go ahead and roll that d8. Three. All right, is our goblin dropping out of the contest? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So He's as the, the gnome announcer just calls out, one down, three to go, looking honestly across the table. Two down. Two down. 
two down. I'm dead. <laughs> or at least Anaphylaxis, right? <laughs> that's, that's what's happening. <laughs> you are not quite dead, but a, uh, another fairy it's attendant shock. comes up behind you and is clapping you on the back, trying to get you to spit <gasps> out the cousin. <laughs> and what was your role? Um, what race am I? Uh, so we had a fairy, a You're goblin, a human, and a, yeah, and a, a, okay. a dwarf. So we have a human left. So I'm the human. I imagine I'm the one that works for the carnival that was planted in there to ah. win every time. So that way the prize just goes back to the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> and so have a human as, that. As, <laughs> as they're counting down, I'm like stretching my neck. And then I imagine I just... Home, because I got a, a sixteen. Nice. Very nice. You take no custer damage as they slide down your gullet. You remembering to drink water with each of the bites to make it you easier to swallow. You just pour water over. <laughs> right. I got a thirteen. You also succeeded, although you have not been able to eat them as fast. Not being used to something quite like this. You are managing to keep in the race. Okay. I mean, that's such a delicate. I know. I was Sugar thinking about with that. No savory. Or... Yeah. Well, and I'm not used to this kind of food, so it's like. <laughs> and I imagine like she's eating the paper, because if there's paper, just because she doesn't know any better. There's. It's fiber, right? Yeah. yeah. It's good so, well, I'm assuming they would remove the papers for an eating contest, right? That's part of the challenge. Oh. You gotta unwrap. Yeah, just eat the paper too. No, he just ate it. Yeah, he eat out of the paper. Peel it off the paper, throw yeah. the paper, grab the next one. <laughs> I'll look over and I'll see that strategy. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I'll change oh, my strategy. They have peels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our three remaining competitors. Oh, con okay. saves, please. Go ahead and roll a D for me. Seven, that's happening. Okay, so you are feeling incredibly weak. <laughs> uh, your first one was two damage, correct? It was two, yeah. You are barely holding on okay. at this point. <laughs> Tap out. All right, as the fairy who has now consumed half of the plate and like fullest value you've ever seen, because fairies are not very large, uh, is moved off to the side Just and they begin to give you a potion to help with the indigestion of all of that sugar. <laughs> it's an enlarged reduced potion. Right. <laughs> reduce just reduces the food. There you go, that's perfect. Can I get a remove poison spell? <laughs> <laughs> um, Claire comes up our plant. Yes. I rolled a three. Go ahead and roll a d8. Three. Uh, as you are trying to keep up and seeing that there's only one competitor left where normally people are beginning to slow down at this point, uh, you accidentally eat one of the wrappers with it mm -hmm. and begin to choke for a moment before swallowing it down the custard <laughs> just burning on its way through. <laughs> just... I rolled a 21. All right. <laughs> that choking has allowed you to catch up. Yes. Now over halfway through the plate of cupcakes with only two competitors left on the map. Removing the peels really helps. <laughs> it I saw that, and then up. yeah, and then seeing he didn't remove the peel, and that could have happened so to me. <laughs> very lucky. Yes, very lucky. Two more con saves. Two more. <laughs> Your lucky solstice isn't there. That's true. Fifteen. All right. Twelve. All right, you're both hanging in there. Ooh. Yes, okay. they've had to now sweep away the first plate as two more gnomes have carried over two more on their head and slid them onto the table, piled just as high as that initial one. And that was the fourth round, so there are two rounds to go. Oh to my find gosh. Out who has had the most? Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, they're starting to turn. Seven. Fourteen. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a D8. Dang it. Getting his pacing back, our professional competitor <laughs> now is remembering to remove every peel. Oh, come on, just You roll didn't it. study for years at the Baldur's Academy for eating cupcakes <laughs> to fail. <laughs> That's a doctor cupcake fitness. eater to you. Yes, I have a doctor. All right. So you take two custard damage as this is probably more food than you have had in a single day, let alone a single sitting. Yep. Go Ooh, ahead. That's bad. Con saves, folks. As we enter the final round. Ooh. You can do it, Jeltra. Don't laugh. Ooh. No. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> and D8s for both of you, please. I, I rolled a four. Yeah. On your, yeah? Oh, seven. 
Eight. Oh, that was incredibly lucky. As, uh, it ha- do you still have hit points left? One hit point left. <laughs> the buzzer goes off as the human commoner collapses into the food on the table. And oh, you- no! And you feel the cupcakes beginning to Ooh. come up. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, they throw oh. down a curtain, closing it as they see this all about to happen. <laughs> and the now proprietor announces, We have a winner! Barely! But, uh, <laughs> we will be happy to announce it once they have regained their composure. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, behind the tent, uh, as they have now uh, come over to resuscitate those of you that went down, um, bringing potions and healing, uh, and what potion of healing for you as well to bring you back up to full HP at the oh, end good. of the competition. As uh, that would stink. <laughs> the kindly, the kindly gnome bard comes back around, just giggling to herself. It was, after all, just a game. Can't have anybody truly getting hurt, can we? That, that was a game. Well. Yay! I will admit, this is the first time we've had um, so many smaller opponents take place. Uh, But this is rightfully yours. And she reaches into her satchel and hands over a potion of invisibility for winning the competition. Damn! Nice! Thank you! What is it? What does it do? Is the potion invisible? Is it? <laughs> is it does it have a label? I just, I'm not sure, um, but I so would know what it is it right is away. It is this very prettily carved glass bottle um, with sort of uh, wispy etchings across the side that comes up into a cork. And on top of the cork is a clear globe. Um, it appears to have nothing inside of it, but when you shake it, you get this kind of sense of a, a sparkling glow as the material moves. Mm and then settles back to regain that appearance of emptiness. Thank, thank you. It will turn you invisible. So... Thank you. Forever? No, for, for, uh, <laughs> but I... That is concerning. Um, no, 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 for, uh, for an hour. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Okay. I would save it for something special. Like my birthday. That is, that is an option. But I think that you may be needing it um, sooner than that. Oh, okay. Well, sure. I'll, I'll keep it safe. For Grandfather Oak's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> she swings her lute back around to the front and begins to play it again. And uh, as she begins to walk away, the healing taking place and you no longer feeling Ugh. as sick as before, as now all of the other competitors are right as range, as range she tosses back over her shoulder. There are folks looking for you here, if you keep an eye out. I think you'll be a great help. But I don't know anybody. You will, and she disappears behind a tree. Okay. (laughs) And as she turns, this blonde ponytail that she has, you see just this flickering of white as it moves beyond. No. At that moment, all of the lights in the carnival begin to raise and lower, raise and lower, as the music on the calliope shifts, and barkers at each corner begin to announce the Big Top extravaganza. I'll make my way to the Big Top. And as you make your way there, we turn back. To Cody. Okay. Can I get... I meant to watch the last part of the video, but I, my mom interrupted my plans today. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, what exactly did they say? I know, like, the Kanku doesn't know anything. Yeah, we can have a little replay of yeah. that. Um, from inside, in a low, gravelly voice, you hear, We need... You need to find a way to calm down. Returned in a high-pitched, shrill voice. I'll calm down when that Kenku pest is gone. Which, she knows nothing. She'll get frustrated soon enough and be on her way. Light, I hope you're right. Which, trust me. Okay. And I appreciate you doing the names, but your voices are very distinct. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. 
I'm still in my ugly clothes, but I guess this is more important. <laughs> Everything inside goes silent. Uh, Mr. Witch, Mr. Light, it's it's Cody, Cody uh, Lilac. I have information about stuff going on in the carnival and some concerns that I have. I, I, I know I'm not supposed to bring those concerns to you, but... I... Mid-sentence, the door swings open as Mr. Witch stands looking down at you with a face of slight concern. Mr. Light bent over behind him, digging through a chest as you see him pull out his wand, jingling with the jester's tune behind, turning to you. Cody, dear, it'll have to wait. We simply just cannot be late. The big time extravaganza's going to begin. And if you're not in the circle, well, you are sure not to win. Well, I have to change my clothes real quick. I'm still in my work uniform. I should have done it earlier, I realize, but a lot of things have been happening. Um, and I, I Mr. found time. Light just breezes right past you <laughs> as Mr. Witch checks his clock. We will be happy to discuss whatever disturbances you may have come across, but you'll have to wait until after the extravaganza. Well, hopefully I'm not killed during it. <laughs> he cracks a little bit of a smile and then begins to laugh in a low voice. <laughs> and closes the door. To be honest, Mr. Witch, that was more menacing than than anything else. A lot of menacing going... I'm uh, just walking to myself. A lot of menacing today and mysteriousness. And then I'm going to very quickly switch uh, into a uh, black and white outfit. But each piece is a different pattern. So it's like a plaid shirt with a paisley <laughs> waistcoat with checkered pants and like a chevron shoe and then like an ombre hat. But it's all black and white. And then uh, the tie has uh, embossed unicorns upon it. Mm. All black and white, but different patterns. So it looks hideous. I love it. You're, 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 I don't even have a good description for this harlequin monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the rest of you doing in the meantime? I well, will mosey to the big top. Excellent. I think we were heading to the big top. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. When the lights were going down. Were you guys still with the Kenku, or I can't remember? No, I think she, the Kenku left us, I thought. Or wait. No, I think she's going too, because I think we're all, everybody's supposed to be yeah. out of the big top right now, so. I, we were talking to her again, and she didn't, she maybe knew Ellie. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. And now, <laughs> the three of you, with Kettle Steam, stand in front of the entrance to the big top as Cody comes out in his proper clothing, mm. making his way from the staff area. A stunning choice. Thank you, my love. <laughs> my eyes hurt. <laughs> However, why? Uh, it's just really busy. Well, but it's I mean, all black and white. It's the first day of the carnival. Of course it's busy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Percy, it, it doesn't get easier. You just oh. start to ignore it. It, okay. it becomes part of the scenery. It's fine. Right. The people. I love your waistcoat. Oh, thank you. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, going from monochrome to two colors might not be enough of a bold statement, but I don't want to stand out during the big talk because I'm right. not working tonight. I right. We want to kind of fade off. into the background with everyone else. It, uh -huh. it does fade. <laughs> a tall order for someone as beautiful as you. Oh, my love. If you <laughs> don't stop, I'm going to die of embarrassment. Well, you were gone. I missed you. <laughs> well, well, while I was gone, I tried to talk to Dr. Mr. Rich and Mr. Light, uh, the, but they the, were very, very busy and the didn't big top. The big top is starting. Sorry, Edge. <laughs> Inside, <laughs> they were quite you hear cheers mm -hmm. as the ringmaster begins to announce Mr. Light himself stepping upon the stage to welcome the crowd. At I work for him. I, oh, okay. In the big top, I'm usually in the yeah. big top. Show. I'm uh, off tonight. Uh -huh. At this point, between going to change and being waylaid by Step Settle Settle Creek, Kettle Steam. Yeah, Settle wow, that was, that was weird. Um, Kingsport. There is yes. Oh, we uh, should have just made a Kingsport. Yeah. <laughs> Who says it's not? <laughs> uh, the majority of the crowd has taken their seats, and there is only seats at the very front left, directly in the splash zone, and. 
One seat <laughs> in your row is already taken by a wood elf. Oh, score! Look, seats them. right up front! As Jeldra, <laughs> the folks you have seen moving their way throughout the carnival with their loud disturbances and interruptions settle in next to you. Before I... Hello. S- Go ahead. I just bowed to her. A noble wood elf in our midst. Well, she only seems to be happy. She still seems noble, a warrior of the forest. I remove my top hat and go, Cody Lilac, may we sit with you? Um, I sure. talk incessantly during the show. Sure. <laughs> but it's helpful context. I will. I. Hi, Nikaid Malik. May I? I'll sit next to you if that's okay. Okay. And then I just kind of turn around to my back to seat and I jump back okay. into it. <laughs> and I like take my feet and I stretch out. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Someone could trip. He has very <laughs> short legs. <laughs> I grab my, my feet with my hand and I just... <clears throat> and I like tuck into myself and I sit. I like that. You're trying to make sure people don't trip. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm just going to pop down the seat. All right. Who's on the other end? Right. Is it like the end? So uh, it sounds like Jeltra is on the end. So there's an aisle next to her. Um, our hair and gone. And... Whatever over the rest of you say. I'm in the middle. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll be in the end with Cody. <laughs> Have fun with that. I'll take off my top hat in respect and my uh, perfectly quaffed blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> the roof of this tent reaches towards the night sky in three swooping sky. this night sky right. in three swooping <laughs> peaks topped with spinning gold stars. Painted wooden panels on the tent walls whirl with colorful motion, displaying vibrant circus performances. The sound of music and laughter drifts all around you out the carnival door. As Mr. Witch has already finished his evening announcements at the time that you have all taken your seats, there as is... As soon as he finishes, I... Very good, sir! <laughs> <laughs> Let... The thing like, takes a moment to kind of catch you up on. <laughs> Let the performances begin! And raising his hand up, there is a spray of sparks and fireworks out the tip of the wand that seem to reach up to the top as acrobats drop down on their, uh, their sp- oh gosh, on their ropes their and begin, silks. yes, and nice. begin the performances. Uh, each of the three rings of the circus having their own events happening simultaneously. In the front row near the center, you have a phenomenal view of all of them. I feel like- I'm usually in that ring. I'm not paying attention to you because I'm literally <laughs> on the edge of my seat, like holding my wings, like. I see you not listening to me and I go, Jeltra, I'm usually in that one. <laughs> oh. <coughs> oh. And I'm just kind of, Again, oh, it's it's overwhelming. It's really like um, sensory overload, but also very um, nostalgic. So I feel like Jeltra is trying to hold back tears at this point because you know, they, they've never seen a circus like, before. Like we, you know, I came with my mom, and I'm just remembering that. And I lean over. Are Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> This is quite impressive, isn't it? You know, I working here for a while now, it kind of loses some of its, but it's really cool to see from this angle. <gasps> oh, that's Tully. Tully's kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, racist. <laughs> he points at a pixie racing chariots pulled by weasels flying through the air as they make a loop in a figure eight around floating pedestals marking the segments. Absolutely can't stand minks and badgers. It's very bad. Laces. And <laughs> there's a pop next to you as you hear uh, a familiar <gasps> of agreement. Oh, yes. It's Snaggletooth. <laughs> what does Snaggletooth look like? He's like the oldest dog on Earth. <laughs> and he is also wearing butterfly wings. <gasps> Aren't you a good boy? Does he have stew? <laughs> in his jaws hangs a little cauldron oh thank steaming. you so much and I'll hand that to you what? it's stew you asked for it earlier 
I'm just gonna put it on the ground because I don't remember. I will for reach this. out. I will reach in, grab like a chunk of meat out of it, and then give that to Snaggle. <laughs> the dog sloppily and happily <laughs> kind of jowls going everywhere, <laughs> slurps it down, and as he does, there's a pop, and nothing is there. That's a good trick. How'd you teach him that? Uh, oh, before we went to the garden, uh, jump trap, jump trap. Uh, just so you know, this isn't. A tragedy. It's it's meant for enjoyment and fun. It's rude to cry. Don't police her emotions. Well, I mean, okay. If I saw somebody crying while I was performing, I would feel very concerned. I'm trying to <laughs> gain my composure. As the acts change from the pixie racing, a satyr begins to fiddle in the ring. As plants begin to burst from the ground, blossoming into flowers in every color that you've ever seen or imagined. This is my favorite part. (laughs) As you say that, the flowers all begin to sway in time to the fiddle tune. Several of them climbing higher behind the satyr. I'm not pronouncing that word Seder. properly. Seder, yeah. And uh, beginning to bounce back and forth in time with the front one going side to side. <laughs> they don't do that in the forest. As the acts continue on, a tiefling fire breather who summons capering magma mephits and Ooh. smoke mephits that dispatch after a minute of the performance. A goblin juggler who can catch and juggle any tiny objects tossed to her by the crowd. Ooh. Oh, wow. An elf ballerina who dances with animated costumes that spring from a magic wardrobe. And after this act, Mr. Light comes back to the stage announcing I hope you've enjoyed this one and all, this evening's extravaganza. We have a final performance before we announce the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. Now look around, I'm trying to find them. Isn't that usually at the end of the night? It is during the extravaganza. The extravaganza. And At this point, behind him, as it is spoken, a large pool of water is being wheeled onto the stage by eight goblins, and as they reach to the center, Palasha, the mermaid, springs out of the water, bright red hair flipping backwards, seemingly somehow already dry, as she begins to sing the song All at once, sad, beautiful, eliciting. Where you cry? (laughs) (laughs) Eliciting tears from the audience as a whole, and what is everybody's passive perception? Fourteen. Ten. Fifteen. Twelve. Ten. Jeltra and Cody, as she sings you see that she appears to nearly be looking directly at your group. But as you follow her gaze, the vomitorium next to you, there stands the mime that you ran into outside of the, well, all of you, not you unfortunately yet, uh, the mime that you ran into outside of the Hall of Mirrors. And they seem to be locked in a gaze. And he has this sad smile on his face and is twiddling between his fingers a ring. Mm. Her tune changes, the mood lightning, as she knows she can't bring down the whole room, and you see that it seems to have some sort of magical effect on the mood of all of those present, as this feeling of hope and uplifting and happiness and joy begins to spread through the audience. Above her, the water beginning to weave into shapes above her head, taking on the same appearance of those acrobats from before with the silk ropes as the water begins to spin its way up to the ceiling and the notes hit a fever pitch as suddenly fireworks explode from the top of the big big house. 
Oh, <laughs> we're, we're having a hard time with words tonight. Uh, as the as fireworks explode from the top of the big top, and suddenly the water becomes the acrobats once more. As all of the acts come together in a grand finale, the weasels interweaving between the acrobats, the fire breather coming out once more for one final show, and the satyr bringing up all of the plants as a carpeting from that central aisle to lead the audience back out at the end of the extravaganza. I usually stand right there. What is the, what's the mermaid's name? Uh, the mermaid's name is Palasha. Okay. And I really, Pala- really wish Palasha would give us the time of day. Stunning Palasha! She's <laughs> in love with, what's the mime's name? <laughs> <laughs> um, the mime's name is uh, on the tip of my tongue. She's in love with that. Candlefoot. <laughs> Candlefoot. So. Maybe. I mean, but maybe if we were a little bit char- more charming, she would. I don't, I don't understand. Know. You've always said that I'm the most charming person you know. I, I'm just saying, oh, she doesn't give us the time of day, maybe. Candlefoot <laughs> turns to both of you with this kind of look of a little bit of stricken sadness and mimes. Will you talk to her for us? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, oh, right. I, I know Candlefoot, I mean, so Solstice forgot. C- communicate. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, like I was telling Solstice, you you are obviously... She loves you! It's good news! <laughs> <laughs> he mimes taking out a handkerchief and shakes it. Dabs. Okay, I take bad. out a handkerchief and then give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's just the one you were using wasn't real. We, we meant no disrespect. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he said it was rude to cry. <laughs> During the show, you can cry afterwards. Oh. Don't police your own emotions. <laughs> I'm so confused. That he <laughs> bows, removing his beret, <laughs> placing it back on. To be honest, Candlefoot, you really should just ask her. She'd say yes. She loves you. It doesn't matter that you've lost your voice. I know a beautiful calligrapher. He seems to be caught by something as the crowd's beginning to slowly make their way out one by one through that main entrance. And he points. And... You see the tail feathers of Kettle Stream disappear into the dressing room as he sprints after her. Into the dressing room? Okay, well, well, that's definitely a rules violation. If it is, I will go over there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, On the stage itself, um, Mr. Light is announcing to the exiting carnival goers, A monarch has been chosen, and we look forward to sharing it. All of you here have the chance of wearing it. And he holds up a crown of gold and flowers, and then waves his hands, and the image disperses. Children, your life seems boring. Come with us. This will be much more interesting. (laughs) Hold on. Hold on. We have to go after the kinku. I don't like how you said go after. We're on the same side. But yes, we should go grab Well, she's breaking and entering into a restricted space, so... Doesn't she work here? No. We've had an eventful evening. Um, Kettle Stream doesn't work here, no. I thought she worked here this whole time. Well, we have to catch up with Solstice before she wrings Kettle Stream's neck, so... Mm. Question? Okay. So on my ticket, it, it... I'm wondering if maybe it doesn't work this way or whatnot. Is there a map on the back of the ticket at all, possibly? Uh, there's an artistic rendering. Okay. So it's not super easy to follow, but okay. it does say the general locations of okay. where are. So then while they're discussing that, I'll pull out uh, the envelope um, with my ticket in it. And so I can look and see what I want to do next. I- Is it obvious? I mean, you're not trying to hide it. No, so. yeah, I'm just taking it out and just looking at my ticket. Does that... Hold on. And I kind of, while you're looking at it, position it. I... Hmm? Each hey! Thing. What? We have those two! We got... And oh. I rummage... Pull it out. Yeah, you got... 
tickets for the carnival. No, 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 right? no, 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 no. I flip it over, realizing the envelope. Oh. At least from whatever. Uh, Tumble Wumble. Yeah. At least from Tumble Wumble. Yes. She. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's a very mysterious and frustrating figure that has given us all these tickets for some greater purpose. But we really have to go chase that bird person. So you're definitely coming so with that's, us now. But that's not Ellie Strum Tumble Wumble. That's not. No. 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 Uh, so that was Kettle Stream that is now seeming to be in the dressing room, uh, who was also kind of handed so, to us by Ellie Thumblestrum. But if. <laughs> okay, but if it's wrong for, the, for well, them to go into the dressing I, room then it would be wrong for me to go in the dressing room because I, i'm not supposed to be in the dressing you're, room you're i touch either shoulders of yours and say you are not working for me because <laughs> <laughs> that's not a i don't think it works that way and i work for the carnival how tall are you how tall is okay. about five two five three okay it's not terribly tall you children half, half elf half. oh duh children yes Adventure. Come on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Come on, fairy friend. I went after her. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, making your way to the entrance, there is a little bit of a commotion happening within, you can hear, as two guards uh, stand outside, witch light hands that you both recognize, uh, who are bickering back and forth over the performances this evening, which ones were subpar as comparison to regular who was really on their game, passing back and forth a bottle of pear cider. Are these two guards, one always has a good opinion and always one always has the wrong opinion? Um, they each have a favorite and dislike everybody else. Oh, so I don't like these guys. Because I'm not, is, is my act one of their favorites? Uh, it depends on whether you talk to them Because my act sounds really not. boring compared to what you described. <laughs> 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 um, I, <laughs> sorry. Uh, they both have a soft spot for Palasha, um, but one of them has, uh, his favorite is the, the satyr, and the other one's favorite is the firebringer. So I will push right past them. Yes. They let, and they let Kettle Stream go by them, right? Um, so she went through like a curtain next to them. She didn't okay. try to go through them. Oh, okay. And neither of them seemed to Did have you, noticed. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so I start berating them. <laughs> you have to be constantly vigilant. There's a curtain right here. They clearly got past you. And now we need to know what's going on inside there. Oh, yeah, this is the curtain. This is where people go in and out. Oh. Right? Uh, yeah. Is it? You work so, here, you go in and out the court. Okay, so I, okay. I pull the curtain so, inside. But someone who doesn't work here went in. Oh, impossible. Percy walks through the curtain. Yeah, and right, like, right totally, past because you. of the line of sight of these two humans looking at you, totally miss the small creature walking through. Oh, I follow Percy. But nobody right ever gets line. past us. I'll keep going. <laughs> hey, you. Oh no, huh? she's with me. I made her an employee for the day. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> and like, it takes the pear cider from the other guy forcibly, throws some more back. Okay, I. Balasha was on our game tonight. That is not important. I just want that. <laughs> I will be making a complaint with your supervisors. And, I and also, knife throwing is really hard. It's easy to breathe fire. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like behind you, like them nudging. What's he on about? <laughs> just saying, especially when you're you're literally like. Like a demon breathing fire is super easy. <laughs> um, within um, most of the performers at this point are either still out on the stage uh, or have moved on to other sections of the carnival, where they'll be giving smaller versions of this extravagant performance throughout the evening. Um, there is uh, the fire breather sitting back, uh, <laughs> applying uh, the tiefling, applying uh, some. Uh, grease to his chapped lips after the performance as he must do every night uh magic solved to prevent them from remaining burned or getting blisters and seems to not have noticed any of you come in as there is the sound of a, a like a, a squawk and you see the legs of a bird out of a chest as <laughs> kettle steam is throwing things behind her seeming to try and find the bottom of this there's a second chest next to it with all of its contents on the ground already as if she's been going one by one can i thunk a, a dart loudly against the lid of the chest <laughs> you hear ah! 
I just pick her up. <laughs> Upside down. Did you find what you were looking for? In the voice of Mr. Light, the Kenku responds, Not at all. Oh. And then in the voice of Mr. Witch, she doesn't know anything. All right, Kenosu, you talked normally before. I thought it would be impactful. As she sat right side up. And when you're upside you, down, it's hard to concentrate on these things. You can't steal from the carnival. I'm not stealing. And as she says that, she's still going and rummaging through as she throws out. I will uh, slam the <laughs> lid of it down. <laughs> you can't do that. The portal could be anywhere. I'm pretty sure somebody would have found a portal to the Feywild in the bottom of their clothing trunk. Is there another trunk next to it? Yeah. I'll open it and start looking. <laughs> she, maybe she lost something. Technically, you are working for me, so I guess that's fine. Is that the fire breather's trunk? I don't know. What are these? It's not mine. <laughs> oh, hello. Name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> As I like that you I'm just gonna leave it that you said name <laughs> it's Name, name. <laughs> um, the the teethling's name is Name Mexic Name Mexic uh, I'm sorry Name <laughs> I'm not taking any offense to anything from you dear well that's easy enough to say I guess I can't do that his hands we fucked him. Huh. Oh. <laughs> if you could call it that. That's rude. Well, <laughs> I'll, write <laughs> I'll write call it that. <laughs> As he finishes and smacks his lips at <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> at, at the Goliath. <laughs> I slide a dart into my, my hand and I'm thinking about it and then I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Down boy. Well, I think it was as spicy a time as any I've ever had, and that's saying something. Well, I mean, it's almost as bland as your big talk, Matt. Uh, dear, can you not go through my chest, please? Nothing in here! Yeah. Well, there's this thing. If you find a pair of bright... Uh, that's flammable. Oh. Is Kettle Stream back to digging through that chest? She's standing there with her wings crossed frustratedly. <laughs> Where's Candlefoot? Uh, Candlefoot is not here. Didn't he run over here? He did. Where did the mime go? Did you see him, Dame? Or were you too busy focusing on your reflection? Well, I saw the little bird fella come in, but uh, uh, Candlefoot hasn't been through. That's odd. Uh, in the future, when a stranger is digging through people's personal belongings, you should probably stop them. And I'll turn back to Kettle Stream. I thought that was his job. I when I'm failing tonight, I'm off. <laughs> We're I'm off still tonight. failing. <laughs> oh, we'll get Twiddle D and Twiddle Lum outside to handle them. And he just goes back to Prius. <laughs> okay, so are we expecting this portal to look like something specific? Wait, is that what you're looking for? Yes, a, a portal to the Feywild. That's what Kettle Stream and uh, the Persimmon are after. Oh. Persimmon, I believe you have business there? I don't know if you ever told us. I just need to find it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the Feywild is very dangerous, so you might not want to find it. I know. And then Kettle Stream has equally mysterious and nonsensical reasons for finding it as well. Mm. And also there's... I'm uh, trying to save a realm. Okay. That sounds important. Incredibly. We don't know what, what lies happened? beyond. Well, I was trying to explain it to all of them, but my... I have had a difficult time reaching my patron for the better part of a year. I know how that feels. She's not reached out, and I feel my connection to her waning, and I fear if it lasts any longer, I will lose it entirely. Wait. I've been there. Your patron? Like somebody who pays for your meals? Is yes. it Elephant Tiny Trunk? No. Is it Ellie's Drum Tumble Bumble? 
That's the same person, I think. Uh, Ellie. The Fay Rock she, Band. That's who. That's who what? gave us our tickets. The Fay Rock Band. Ellie Sue Tumblewog. <laughs> no, I think it's Ellie Wink Tumble. Tom. No, it's not that. It, whatever, whatever, it's not that. <laughs> oh. They called her Ellie Pink. Strum Tumble Wumble. I guess I'll. Okay. <laughs> you are all making this incredibly difficult and holding me up. If we're going to continue to talk, we should be looking while we do it. And she turns around and shoves open the curtain again and makes her way back out into the main space. <sighs> I'm going to, having observed that and just having been talking to Gentra. Jeltra? Jeltra. Jeltra, sorry. No worries. Jeltra, I'm just gonna be... I... I don't know where this this portal could be. Do you... No, you're of no help either. If Jeltra. I were a portal, where would I be? Jeltra, can you roll a d8? Sure. Come on. Ah, two. Um, as you are saying that and thinking about it, Having been digging through that chest in your hand is a waistcoat with a chain of 100 silk handkerchiefs tied together, sliding out of one of its pockets, more of them sliding out (laughs) as you gesture. I don't know where we could find it. And where have you looked? We've looked in the swans, the mines. Why would someone hide a portal in a swan? Well, to be honest, the swans here are very... Um, those two have hidden other things in the swans. Oh! What are you- oh! At this point I've like wrapped myself in it. (laughs) Uh, at this point you've pulled about 20 feet of handkerchief out of this as you're talking here. Are there any that are like, dark green? They are in, again, every shade, like white, black, Forest green, navy, maroon, uh, paisley. There's several that match his outfit <laughs> clearly in black and white in various patterns. I'm gonna grab the one that's forest green, untie it from the rest, and put it in my. As you satchel. untie it, there's this strange whoosh of light that seems to travel in both directions, and the next handkerchief that comes out is the last one. Weird. Having broken the chain. Oh, you broke it just needed a handkerchief. Should, he's got plenty. You should really put that back in the box and we'll just pretend like we didn't, didn't break it. Oh. Oh, okay. If somebody asks me directly, though, I am going to tell them, so. I'll try and tie it back like it was before. <laughs> All right. So we have a fave crossing we need to find, right? Mm-hmm. And it's not always around, or I would have found it because I've been in every nook and cranny of this carnival, including Solstice. Um, so, if that's the case, then we should go to Lost Things. Do we just tell them we lost a crossing? I mean, why not? That sounds incriminating. Ellie also said other people here might know more than they're letting on. We could try to find these people. Anyone have any buttons? (laughs) Yeah, I have one. Hey, that's mine. I gave it to a monkey earlier today. Oh. No, it's mine. <laughs> I'll put it back. <laughs> Lost Things is as good a place to start again as any. Well, because we're looking for a door, right? So maybe somebody lost a door. Well, it maybe it's... So it was like a door. Maybe it it's could in a be chest. chest. Yeah, like... Maybe it's in a chest and someone lost it. So do we have, like, fairy tales in our world? Hmm? Well, usually when you end up in a strange world, you either go through a mirror, a wardrobe, or some kind of strange door. So we should be looking for mirrors, wardrobes, and doors. And, you know, bodies of running water. That is also how you end up in strange places. Yes, but you would, you want that to be the case? No, I really don't want that to be the case. Mm-hmm. I would I mean, put it out in the universe then. People, uh, 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 okay. Would my granny have told me stories about things like this? You heard lots of stories about the Fae itself. Okay. About the way that it worked, about the uh, codes of conduct. Sure. Between if a gift is offered, a gift must be returned, Mm -hmm. um, and being polite in the households of others, things like that. Okay. Um, But as far as reaching it, 
um, she always treated it as if it was impossible. Okay. You know, my love, seeing her reminds me of the moon woman. It does. Oh. Where, is that... where are you from? Well, she's she's a wood elf, but sometimes they don't live in woods. Sometimes they live in cities and stuff. Oh, I know. I, I, I hope you lived in a wood. I, I did. I do. I do live in, in the woods. Um, my mother and I would um, only go to the city or to the towns very uh, rarely. Um, but I don't even know if my wood had a name. It was uh, just the woods. Roll a d20. Okay. History check. Oh, okay. Eight. Um, yeah, you never. It was never given a name. It was just where you lived. I just lived in the woods. Uh, when I was younger and I met Solstice, uh, we lived in the Moonwood near Silvery Moon. Hmm. Do I know the name of my town? Or should I just make one up? You're about to make one up. Okay. Uh, Mill Moon. <laughs> 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 the name Mill Moon is familiar to you. Oh, I know Mill Moon. It's impossible. It's the smallest town on Earth. It was close by to where I lived. You're from the Moonwood, then. Is that what it's called? If it's near Mill Moon. Well, it was about a day's walk, day and a half. Oh, then you might know Solstice if you lived in the... Uh, she was born there. She looked very different at the time. Oh, kind of. well, yeah, when you're sm- when you're younger... Well, no, she had a, a, kind of a horse face and kind of like goat-like hooves, uh, a longer tail. She's, uh, he's right there. That's rude. No, it's true. My body is very different now. Oh. Oh. I, mean, you're I was a warrior of the forest. <gasps> a noble path stretched on to eternity to guard those woods from any who might besmirch them. But... Then I fell in love, and things have been changed. Have been changed <laughs> irrevocably. I hope one day to return to that forest when your body is in the earth. Jobster, can I have a history or nature check? Okay. Um, I mean, yes, I will die, <laughs> and you'd be free to go back. Just say so you can make this with advantage. Just okay. My character. Tarot cards down. Shuffling the deck. Um, as soon as she starts waxing on about that, Percy's going to walk back through the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were tales of unicorns in the woods, mm-hmm. um, but as far as you know, um, there were none in your lifetime. Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, there used to be unicorns. At least that's what the stories say. I never saw one. and My mother and I walked those woods all the time. You know, I mean, Solstice's think family is there, but they would have hidden from people that didn't Do not take it personally. Oh. We tend to stay secluded and, again, only show up when a righteous need calls for us. Or a uh, virginal maiden. Yes, some of us are very susceptible to virginal maidens. I'm referring to myself. I, so I was referring to myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What does that? What does all of that have to do with the portal? <laughs> Nothing at all. Oh, it looks like we've lost Percy again. I start following. Did you make your way to Lost Things? <laughs> yeah, I'm a sort of. I don't know where it's at, but I'm like leaving the big top and trying to figure let's, out where to go. Let's walk least, and talk. Let's walk and talk. Can we run to catch up so he doesn't get lost again? <laughs> so Kettle Steam would have gone with you, not being interested at all in this conversation. Um, I got real bored real fast. <laughs> I just am like, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you still wound up in all of the I handkerchiefs? So, or? Yeah. Okay. Walking out, just dragging a trail of them behind you. Um, so, uh, Kettle Steam and Percy make their way to Lost Property just a moment before the rest of you are able to catch up with them. We are having such a be. glorious day. <laughs> <laughs> having it not be terribly far from the big top. Um, as you approach, uh, outside the Lost Property Wagon is a large feline creature with midnight blue fur. It has a pair of tentacles extending from its shoulders and wears fake butterfly wings. Hanging from its collar is a small wooden keg. The creature rough houses with two young boys (laughs) as one boy squeals, Again, Dola, again! While the other hangs on to the creature's neck. And 
This is Durla. Burp, 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 burp. No. Durla Grom. Oh. Aww. Greetings, Durla. How is your day? <sighs> oh. It's like that. It's not bad. Oh. <laughs> I miss the stranger worlds, I will say. But these two have been good company. <laughs> and as he says that, um, he swings the boy up into the air and one of the tentacles wraps around and catches him and guides him back to the ground. You children are lucky that uh, he is so friendly because usually a displacer beast would consume you very quickly. One of the boys is too busy giggling to have listened to that at all. <laughs> and the other one you see turn pale. But not him. And as, <laughs> as, as you say that... Uh, the other tentacle comes up and wraps around to the keg and hands it over to the boy who now seems to have forgotten what you just said as he gets excited about the spiced apple juice within. <laughs> we try not to scare them too much. Sorry. Uh, little white lies are hard for me. But, and come on, tell me you don't miss the days of eating young children. <laughs> I look at the faces of the kids and see if they heard that. <laughs> uh, both of the boys have started to dig around in the lost property wagon at this point, as uh, as Deer is talking to both of you. And um, oh. I never was uh, one to eat humanoids myself. Oh. Well, before you retire, you should at least try it. Oh. And it kind of surveys the group. <laughs> Keep that in mind. It just seems fun. <laughs> little like purring sounds coming out from underneath as it occasionally does one of these numbers anyway we're looking for a fey crossing is there one in lost and found i mean you're welcome to take a look but not that i'm aware of i want to tell the boys let me know if you find a door in there or a mirror or a wardrobe as you begin to approach the wagon, suddenly Durla lets out this growl and hiss and leaps past you, grabbing one of the boys with the tentacle and pulling it up in the air and with the other snatches out of its hand a mirrored glass ball. And you see the boy start to cry as the rage fades from Durla's face, having realized what his reaction caused and he gently sets the boy down i'm 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 so sorry this is just very uh very important to me and very fragile um uh how about how about a candy and he reaches into the satchel and pulls out uh, a candy with one of the tentacles and hands it over to the boy who starts to snipple a little bit wiping away the tears and unwrapping the taffy and um, while he's doing that, I would like to get down. I was like, Durga's really very gentle. And then I will hold out my hand and like three little fireflies will slowly sprout into butterflies. <laughs> you have him captivated as he starts to laugh and clap at this. And I'll have them like at perfect chasing distance around Durga again. <laughs> um, troubles forgotten. They begin to play again as Durla's tentacle brings the mirrored ball to between its front paws, where it gets held gingerly. What? What is that? It was my... It was my son's. And with him missing now, it is all that I have left of him. Did he go missing from the carnival? A week ago. Just Probably. like Billy's brother. And now Candlefoot. Where where was he? Do you know where he disappeared from? Like what he was doing? He was gone to the carousel, but he should have been within eyesight and never returned, so he must have gone somewhere beyond it. The misters are aware and are doing what they can. I'm sure they'll find him. Or so they say. Where's the carousel? 
You went to the carousel before. And another's before, finger at the carousel. And Lost if, Property is just south of that? So I'm assuming okay. me and Burley would have talked about it. Does he know where Hurley was when he disappeared? No. No. Okay. Um, if you... Are you interested in the missing folk? Well, I've been... Yes. Worried. Yes. I've been worried about Hurley for sure. Are you all going to find them? I mean, we want, we want to know how they disappeared. I and mean, then, yeah. I think that's the end goal. He picks up the mirrored ball with one of the tentacles and holds it forward. Take this. Keep it safe. And if you do find him, bring them back together. Okay. Can can do. As I'm like holding it up and looking at it. Does it like do, do anything weird or react? It just catches the light. So it's just a like spherical mirror. Yeah. It has um, several little faces, kind of like a little disco ball, but the shapes are irregular. Okay. Kettle stream, do you find anything yet? And, and again, more things being flung backwards <laughs> out of the wagon. Not a damned thing. And she scuttles back onto the ground, tripping for a second before she picks herself up and shakes out her feathers. It's, I'm getting, I'm sorry, this, I'm getting um, the Grinch vibes from Kettle Street. The Grinch. See, see I, I totally get Skeksis from her. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, head over to the carousel, Gaius. He calls out. His name is Star. Just, you call for him. Okay. And after having done that kindness of returning the temperament of the boys, the mood of the carnival increases once again. I yeah, just reached one. that. Mm. Yeah. Um, Maximum. So you're all going to the carousel? Mm. That's right. Yeah. Think. To do more mischief. We have another. I guess. <laughs> another clue that points us there. So the only people that we know that disappeared now is Star and mm-hmm. Burley. Hurley. Hurley. But so there's rumors about, of other people. And I'm worried about Candlefoot. And a couple of us have remembered losing something like I have lost right. my artistic expression right as they discuss that mm-hmm. this tingling feeling starts in your fingers as you realize for the first time in years that this was the place that you lost the ability to write mm. Children, are you all right? Uh, why, do, why do people lose so much at the carnival? I don't know. Apparently I lost my sense of fashion, but <laughs> clearly I haven't. Well, the bird thinks it's some deal that Witch and Light made with... You haven't seen a pig face, girl, or a weird shadowy being or a toad man, have you? Have I Moon seen mask. them in the periphery at all? Not yet. Okay. No, I... We're that starting. sounds... Odd. Well, I mean, looking around, I'll be like, there's a lot of odd things around here. So, <laughs> like, well, I oh. think... Yeah, you'd remember if you ran into one of them. Okay. Nikkei, the are they ghosts? I haven't gotten anything. I think they are these hags minions that Ellie told us about. Yes, maybe, but I mean, the the pig face was inside the mirror, and you guys told me that mirrors don't actually steal your soul, so maybe well, it's a it could have been an illusion. I don't, I should clarify, I don't think they're, they're dead. I don't think they're ghosts or spirits or anything. I think I think there's something mischievous, and they're up to no good. But I think they're very well breathing and alive. 
But if they're taking people, they are definitely. But what do we have? Stopped. I mean, Harley went missing what, over a month ago, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Well, you think we would have noticed them before now? Things going missing. No, I'm saying these creatures. I mean, today we've seen. I see them. what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. Well, how do you know that they're the ones that are being uh, behind it all? I mean, when I came in, I. Pretty sure it was you. I thought you guys were being mischievous, and I was wrong. You threw something at this one. Oh, no, I was throwing that at one of the not ghosts. Uh, the one wearing the pig mask. Well, all I saw was you throwing, or there was a thunk, and then there was something near your head. No, that would have been at the back of the tent, so you wouldn't have seen what I hit. Mm. Hmm. Well, I just thought you guys were up to trouble. So if if somebody can think that someone else is mischievous, but they really aren't, then maybe we shouldn't jump to conclusions is all I'm saying. Well, but the pig mask girl tried to kidnap someone. Oh, then that's wrong. Yeah, in front of us, right? Mm-hmm. And that's while so. you've never seen the three of them before this evening, um, that was part of what was going on as far as the mood of the carnival being strange with these kind of shadows between tents that are never accounted for as well as the experiences. I mean, just being mischievous isn't evil though, right? No. God, I hope not. Well, if they're taking people, then that's, that's, that's yeah. more than mischievous. <sighs> All right, I wish we're Granny not... were here. Do we have to go to the carousel? Yes. We just got in that long argument that one time about how he can't capture the majesty of a true unicorn, and he's never liked me since. A procession we of must forgive people. wooden unicorns stands motionless on a circular wooden platform. Fairgoers clamor onto the unicorns' backs, and a female centaur sets the ride in motion. The unicorns shake their manes and creak to life, cantering around the carousel to the delight of their riders. I'm just saying, who's on that one? All wrong. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes get misty the again. Eyes are too narrow as well. Mm. The seeming centaur. Diana Cloppington, <laughs> um, standing in front of the ride, eyes, oh, Cody, wow. up and down <laughs> as you approach. <clears throat> You're looking fantastic today. Your horsey bits are fine. She kind of looks down at her body and then back up. No matter how many times you ask me, I can't change the carousel. It's not up to me. I, I'm not here for that at all. You have to take it up with the misters. I'm not here for that at all today. We understand, Diana. And in light of a thing that my beloved told me earlier, I am not going to talk anymore during this interaction. Wow, I didn't know I had that power. <laughs> I just feel like I wouldn't help because I'm going to say something. Have you seen anything effective. mischievous around here? Well, these two. <laughs> she cracks a little bit of a smile. I thought so too. That <laughs> comment, the uh, the agreement has kind of put her into a little bit of better spirits as it's clear that you're you know trying to make a concession for her. Um, any shadows or anything that may have been unexplained? Any pig masks? Lizards? Lizards? Toads. Toads. Toads, Toads. not lizards. Um, not that I... (laughs) Oh, just talk! (laughs) Also, there's the the very ugly moon-masked woman that uh, Persimmons saw. That's right. Uh, We're looking for someone in a pig mask, a moon mask, or a weird toad person. Um, they, long story short, very, very long story short, as I nod to Percy, uh, disappearances. We're just looking for that an answer. doesn't sound good. And the mood immediately falls again as she starts to pace. I haven't seen them myself, but that doesn't bode well. You're usually stationed here? And so you have noticed some disappearances? 
it seems, and she kind of struggles as she's trying to get the words put together, it has to be connected to the, and as she begins to try and speak, she starts coughing oh. and hacking, and brown tree oh. sap oh. begins to come out of That's her mouth. That's not normal. And she takes it gratefully and wipes it away as she finally gets her voice back. That was truly disgusting. Sorry. I... <laughs> Safe to say it's not good. What? Why? Talk around it. Um, she kind of gets befuddled as she tries to think of how to say it. Yeah. Uh, uh, may I? Mm. As I just start climbing up you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> I sit on your shoulder as to be more eye level with the centaur. I'll try and give you some room. Oh, you're you're fine. Okay. I, I don't take up as much I mean, room as you might think. As big as you are, you probably have to sit like a toddler with. That's what I was thinking. Side, maybe. Like, maybe like, maybe, like yeah. Head. Realize that doesn't work, and then like kick a leg over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Oops, sorry, about trigger. <laughs> I'm not a centaur. Yes, you are. I, Look at you. I'm. I'm a person who made. A bad deal. I've known a few of those. And that is something that I cannot speak of. But maybe maybe they can help further. And she points over her shoulder at the carousel as the most recent occupants are climbing off of it and I can I can give you some time. Um, say it's closed for maintenance and if if you're looking for the disappearances then I think that that would be a good place to start okay where was she pointing to the into carousel. the into the like the mechanism of the carousel I or just the, the horses the horses I don't understand what are wooden horses going to do to help us I'm going to walk over to the horses um, she kind of turns and follows and says they're enchanted and they're in pairs and if you can give them something then perhaps they can give you some of what you're looking for i grab the tail of the handkerchief thing and i just start untying them as, and as to like gather handkerchiefs to give i um, <laughs> don't think that's what she means well, and I want the green one back then. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's more like handing it downwards. Yeah. As a, a crowd begins to gather again, she flips the sign to closed and begins to apologize oh. to them about maintenance, um, as all of you are now on the carousel itself. Um, each of the horses, uh, as you approach, they have signs showing their names. And you all know, not having really frequented this because of the little bouts of, uh, of arguments um, with Miss Coffington, uh, that they are all named after um, famous sayings, famous, you know, idioms. And the tags don't look right. Mm. There's things missing from each of them. I'll... Do you want to... This, this looks interesting. I'll look up at, at uh, McCain. And th- do you... Come, come look at this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As I climb down and try to just hop onto the back of one of the, one of the wooden horses. Um, the first pair that you approach, the first name tag on the set is complete. It says Fortune. And the second one, it's clear that letters have been scratched off hmm. from it and there is just a B. Where in the word? In the middle of it? At the beginning? At the at beginning. The end? Okay. It's clearly bold, right? You say that all the time. Oh, yeah. Fortune favors the bold. I'll take out uh, a little carving knife and carve bold. Okay, as you do that, 
the unicorn whinnies at you and... Three more to go, and we can help you more. Okay. And next I one. Scamper over to the next one. Next one reads P R blanks and fall on the other horse. Granny told me this one. I'll hand you the knife. Pride. And then I'll try and scratch I D E into it. You get a similar effect as they seem to become more lively. Um, the two of them nuzzling against each other, having been unable to communicate with one another in a while. Does mine actually work? It does. What is the actual saying? As all of you look over at this carving, it appears that there's a PR, and then as if Jeltra reached out the knife and just like scribbled up and down a bunch of times. Pride goes before the fall. That doesn't make any sense. There's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself. Then I'll move on to the next pair. (laughs) Here you see two more names. The first, Stone. And on the second, an M, missing letters, and an S. Stone. Let's see. There's... Then a missing word. Then M. So, or... so stone, and then so so each of the unicorns has one of the name tags. So one is complete as stone, and the second one has an M, and then blanks, and then an S. So you have Caleb bird with two stones. You have water from a stone, but none of those fit. Hmm. Somebody making it. So would you like <laughs> and then an M word? What do you uh, words? So S the end. Uh, I would let this be, excuse me, an intelligence or a wisdom check. Okay. Just straight. I'm just gonna be looking at it and go. Hmm. What do you guys think? <laughs> Stones. No, it wouldn't be Stone Meadows. Shut up, Daya. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fourteen. Here, I'll just do this. Sixteen? Um, at nearly the same time, you both announce, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Um, I say that about my dad all the time. I forget that one. As you <laughs> carve in the letters, these come to life, and there's this almost sense of charging happening in the base of the carousel. Wow. And it seems that each of them have regained something that they've lost and it begins to work its way higher as you reach the final pair. Can I turn to Moss before we go? I'm like, are you guys trapped? This is our home. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're not trapped. (laughs) So, not anymore. (laughs) Was it um, Persimmon, were you carving the Moss in that one? Sure. Probably. How large is the knife compared to you? Just so I can get an idea of um, your I don't size. Pull out a knife. I pull out Tinker's tools that I have. Oh, okay. And scratch it. Got it. Got it. Okay. He's two feet tall. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. <laughs> I'm three feet tall. Okay. He could definitely sit on one shoulder. You're a little bigger. But... Okay. <laughs> I, I'm used to like you guys. So I was like. Oh, Solstice, you definitely sit yeah. on one shoulder. Gotcha. So it's just gotcha. out of habit that I had to realize. Ooh, wait. Yeah, I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> the final pair has a name complete of Stitch and blanks on the second with an N and more blanks. Stitch and tie oh, saves now. Nine. <laughs> Carving it in, the carousel turns on of its own accord <gasps> and begins moving around. Are we moving with it since mm-hmm. we're on the. <laughs> ah. I pulled out a hand to steady you. I just didn't expect the forward momentum. I'm good. 
<laughs> Any of us will happily answer your questions. Thank you for your help. Um, I like the name Stone, so I'm going to go f- sit on Stone. Okay. Nine watches you walk away. <laughs> Having someone broken the, the first person to do something, I immediately <gasps> clamber down and I run over and I jump on Bold. Okay. I will get on Nine because everyone is being very rude to his face. <laughs> <laughs> um. Moss. Okay. I guess I'll take pride. Uh, each of them in their own way as you step onto them and the ride begins the music playing harmonizing with the calliope to create a single melody as the machine continues on you've all lost something you only said you would help with one thing and we have more important things than the lost stuff so i don't want to waste any questions on those particular things we will tell you anything we can. Have you, uh, seen, have you seen my teddy bear? I miss Teddy Berry. As, uh, as that begins and they work to listen to what each of you have lost, um, starting with Cade. Let me see where it is. The horse says to you, I think I know where that went. That would be with Scabatha Nightshade. She likes to take things like that. What a terrible name. And chiming in as you're behind them. Mm She'll have your writing, too. Really? You lost your writing? But well, you're writing right now. Writing. Oh, so you were literate. No. Continuing. <laughs> they, the, la- the next one says to uh, Persimmon, seems she's gotten a lot from you, group. She'll have your direction. Okay. But what you've lost is elsewhere. Where? Your creativity, your art. Pavlorna will have that. Light strong. In hither. For you, it's in thither. <laughs> and the last one turns. For you, it'll be in yon. Though, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, she has something else of yours as well. Is it? Is it my ability to lie? Do we recognize the name? Because I figured we would know the name of the hag. They the haven't name. said the name oh, of yours said yet. Oh, I'm but Lorna, yes, yeah. but Lorna Blightstraw has my yours. Hair. Scab of the Nightshade has this half of the table. And at the, uh, at the final there, a name that you both no dearly burned into your minds, Granny Moongrave. So she's in the Feywild? In Prismere. In Yon. Is she... Hmm. How do we get to Prismere? We don't usually leave the carousel. But there's Fae Crossing somewhere in the carnival. Do you know where the Fae Crossing is? We don't usually leave the carousel. Do you know where the children, or the people that have gone missing, do you know where they went? Oh, one of the sisters has all of them. Sisters? 
What's the keepers of your lost things? Oh. They're all sisters? Hourglass coven. Do you do you know where they went missing? Into Prismia. Yeah. No, like into the Feywild. Here, when they're here, do you know where they like when they were here where they disappeared from? Oh well we can't leave the carousel. But have Star you seen anything at the carousel? Or he was near it. Have you seen anything? Have Star seen? never came near. He approached and then the pig face thing walked away with him. Hmm. Hmm. Are they part of the hourglass coven? They're hands. Hands of the coven? And as this conversation continues on, the music of the carousel becomes slightly discordant. <laughs> and did these sisters make a deal with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light? That I don't know. But the mistress would know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they they'd would. admit it to us. Um, they would tell us the truth. We see They much. were trading children for the safety of the I'm sure that that's unrelated. I hope so. They have your friend. The one that you're writing on says. Who does? The sisters. Frozen in time and kept away. Where? In Prisbee. Okay, so how do we get there? Uh, we we can't leave the carousel. <laughs> what does it mean? It means something. <laughs> <laughs> we I just guess. how see do you the how other do you side. know this? We see the other side. How do you see it? It comes. Can comes you where? Us? To us. How? In visions. Okay, there we go. Can you show us the other side? And each of these, I will say. Like each sentence is coming from a different yeah. unicorn as it goes Ooh. around. Very unsettling. Um, yeah. It's been a very unsettling day. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell you what we see. At this point, I'm riding bold, just like laying on his back, just like hanging down. Like, can you show us? <laughs> <laughs> For um, you who have lost to Lorna, she is allergic. To seeing someone run Wittershins. What the fuck is a Wittershin? Oh my god, what do I know that word? Oh. What? Oh, no to... Piggly, piggly. <laughs> to the Scabatha trio. The hag you seek sleeps in a dollhouse and can't remember the first person she sees when she wakes up. And to you two. Okay. Endelin has seen her own death, and it happens during an eclipse. Um, Nine. Can I ask for advice? Of course, and the voice comes from Stitch. (laughs) If, If I've been afraid of Moongrave my whole life, but also don't want to waste my life in the carnival. Should I try and get my life back? What she has stolen from Nine, she still has from Stitch. I have my love, it's enough for me. <coughs> the deal can always be undone. Okay, so you don't know you don't know where these people are disappearing from. Shakes its head. She see they seem to indicate that those hands came to take the people. Do you know where they are? The hands. They come and go. Do you know how they come and go or where they come and go? We can't leave the carousel. I think how? it's time we go and speak with Mr. Which? 
as the carousel. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, is there? How are they attached to the carousel? <laughs> like a normal carousel, like there's a there's a metal pole that goes up through. Except for instead of being frozen in position, they're kind of trotting along at the speed of the carousel itself. They're not trapped, I ask. Moving up, <laughs> moving up and down. Well, I mean, it looks like they're general. trapped because they're stuck on a on a pole, right? Oh. They so, can't leave the carousel. They can't well, they, leave the carousel. Yeah, they're just their home. <laughs> they don't want to leave the carousel. If we could no, make it so you could to, leave can't. the carousel, would you want to leave the carousel? The view is so lovely. Okay, I think we're done, and Percy's gonna get off his well, unicorn and walk towards the edge of the platform. Does someone want to look at this magicy in a magicy face, so that just Only in case there's like investigate the carousel at least a little bit with something? I don't have magic sight. I'll I'll use my divine sense. Is there any celestial fiend or undead? <laughs> um, it does. It doesn't give you fey, right? No, not okay. yet. Um, uh, no, it's it's it has. It has an aura, but not of something discernible, and it's not good or evil. Okay, and I would like to then investigate, like, the center and the foundation. Like, are there any hatches? Are there any, like, secret switches or anything like that, I guess? Seems to be solid. Generally, when the carousel sets itself up, um, coming out of the wagon is a disc that unfolds along the ground. And the rest of it folds outwards and outwards and outwards and outwards and outwards until you get to the top, in which the horses are lowered down to meet at the bottom. Okay. Just want to look at it in a magic -y way, or how long has this been going on? Which part? Like us talking to them? Uh, it was about five minutes, like the length of a carousel ride. It's a very forgiving carousel ride. <laughs> right? <laughs> 45 seconds. That's usually what you get. <laughs> it's switch light. You have to enjoy everything. Yes. She shut this whole thing down for us. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I'm also wondering, like, Margarita out of character is like, all these people are watching us ride the carousel that's under maintenance, waiting for their turn. They're going to be super pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were doing little etching things and interacting with the horses. That's so true. Hopefully, we did fix. We were fixing the carousel. We now we're doing a test run. <laughs> okay. As the carousel comes to a halt, setting all of you back facing Diana, Mr. Light is standing next to her with a large grin upon his face and his scepter tucked under one arm. Can you remind me what Mr. Light looks like? Of course, actually, I don't think you have seen them yet, so let me yeah. show you. Well, she watched the first two episodes. Yes, yeah. I'm just, I can't remember which one was which. Happy to share. He's the jester um, one. Yes. Okay, the thin one. Where are they in the pictures? Um, <laughs> all right, so, um, Mr. So this is them together, as Rio would have seen them uh, at their wagon. New okay, Ooh. that's quite sinister looking. Yeah, yeah, it's a little creepy. Yeah, like you're like, that was more ominous than reassuring. <laughs> yeah, sure oh, so they just appeared there? Uh, just Mr. Light. And then Mr. Light's the one with and the jester hat. And... I think okay. this is a little bit less threatening of a photo of him. Yeah. yeah. Ta da! Um, okay. So if he's just going to appear there, um, I'm going to walk up to him. As you begin to approach, um, he says. It seems it's you I have to thank. The gladness you've brought cannot be unranked. And with that, we'd like to offer a talk. If you follow me, let's start with a walk. And he just turns and more of that jingling as sparkles come off of the wand. And this he begins dollar. to exit the carousel as we begin to exit this session. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening for another round of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, and welcome to Margarita. We're so excited to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy uh, to be here. We're, we're very stoked. 
Uh, and uh, with that, we'd love to give a thanks also to all of our patrons. Thank you so much for uh, for helping us make all of this work out. Uh, Sparky, Dossie, but Daniel, Scott, Reels Mom, Alistair, Sean, and Johnny Mac. And with that, we will come up with a tagline eventually. Eventually. eventually.